Hello everyone, this is Mr. Robert Ronan here again, and today I'm finally here for my final breakdown of my favorite character in One's Justice 2, Momo Yaoyorazu. She is so much fun, she's so similar to how she is in the anime, you have to be calculative and think of everything that you do, or, um, what's worthwhile to do in a certain matchup, how her combos change in different situations. She's just a really interesting character that I think a lot of people are, are missing out on by not playing her. She is so much fun. So unique. She has her strengths and weaknesses, so it doesn't feel OP by using her. She's just crazy strong, and it feels it's really great being rewarded for actually thinking and using strategy rather than a lot of characters like 100% Deku, where you're rewarded for just button mashing and going ridiculous. Okay, so let's get straight into her her um, regular buttons. So in her regular form, because as you know, she has multiple weapons, but I'll just go over her um, regular. <laughs> regular attacks first. So her attack string is this three input attack string which does multi hit at the end. She can cancel it into buttons or dash cancel at any point. Um, this leads... You can do the whole string to get good combos. Um, usually that's how you're going to be doing your combos in regular state. You can cancel it into a quirk button to get pretty decent damage that way. Um, with her regular um, weapon, it, she doesn't get that great damage, so 8,300 is pretty good. And yeah, in her regular form, um, you might not be able to tell, but her attack is actually really fast. Compared to other characters in the game, the attack itself is crazy fast. Obviously, obviously when she's quite a distance away, she has travel speed included with the attack, but even that, she has above average um, distance for her attack. A lot of characters um, can only hit their attacks from about here, but Momo's attack, if you press the button, can reach from like around here, run up into the opponent and hit them. So she's really good at, at um, footsieing the opponent and using her really long range attacks. And when she's up close, it is crazy fast how the, um, fast this button is. Maybe not as fast as Kami, but it is very fast and it catches people off guard a lot. Especially from starting positions, from this range, it's probably one of the fastest attacks in the game. Very good stuff. Okay. Um, I showed you the air attack string, it's practically the exact same. <laughs> so, her red attack is probably one of her weaknesses. It does really good damage, 5000 damage, but as you can see, you actually don't get a combo off of it. It is pretty good, just like a regular attack, it has pretty good range, but unfortunately it, it is quite slow and pretty reactable. But one good thing about it, kind of like 100% um, Deku's, she actually has an option select off of it with the plus ultra 2. So if, if I do her um, red attack, I can just mash the plus ultra 2 button. And if it misses, it doesn't do the plus ultra 2, so it doesn't waste my meter. But if it does hit, the plus ultra 2 will come out, and then you get a huge amount of guaranteed damage. And this is really good, because if you ever have your plus ultra 2, you may as well be doing this whenever you do your red attack. Because if it does hit the opponent, there's no way of them breaking it, so they can't bring out the supports or anything. And you've just gotten a massive chunk of damage, what, 17, 18,000 damage, just because you hit a red attack. This is pretty, pretty huge damage, and that they have no chance of breaking away from, completely guaranteed. And yeah, you didn't ha even have to hit confirm the red attack, so really good. Her yellow attack, or her tilt attack as people call it, is this, like, <laughs> fly spotter, like, slap, where she just whacks the opponent, they go into a fumble state. Wet so they um, can't recover until they hit the floor, and you can use that to extend her combos. Um, yeah, it can be cancelled into other buttons, especially with her other weapons. She can cancel into it pretty easily and get combos that way. So yeah, in most of her weapons forms, it's a really good way of getting damage. Um, but her better yellow attack, wait, stop making weapons, is her air yellow attack is actually really good. It's not as good as, as in One's Justice 1, I'm sure you remember her amazing yellow attack. They actually fall out of it a lot faster in this game, and it doesn't do as much damage, and it doesn't do as many hits, it's just a lot worse in a lot of ways. But it, it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a really important tool for her. You can cancel it into it from any situation, and then cancel out of it with any of her quirk buttons. So you add a lot of damage to the end of her combos. And something else... Let me get my meter full. Um, 
you might see that it doesn't do that much damage, like, on its own, so it's not something, like, it's not like one of her damaging, um, moves. But as you can see, if you get near the ceiling, this move does a ton of damage, because they keep getting hit in that ceiling, and it's ridiculous how much damage you can get from this move in the ceiling. Oh, God. Wait, let me just try and get back to the ceiling. Until they get, like, meteor blown. But I want to remind you, that was like a stupid... Like, that wasn't a proper combo, that was just me doing some hits into a yellow attack. And it did 10,700 damage just because she did a yellow attack near the ceiling. Like, that's pretty ridiculous. So if you ever are, like, if you, someone's done their combo and you, you both are really high in the air, just do, like, two hits into the yellow attack. And then, if you're near the ceiling, the yellow attack is going to do a ton of damage. Because they don't get away from you. It's crazy how much damage this does. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to her quirk buttons. So I'm not going to mention her quirk one first, because that's her um, weapon transform. So I'll cover her quirk tilt quirk one first. So this is her weapon throw. It's a basic projectile. It doesn't do that much damage, and it also doesn't travel that far. It travels about the distance of Jiro's projectile, so it's not... Um, crazy good zone. It's not like she's going to be zoning you out with this 1,000 damage projectile, but it is really good that it is really fast, it's unreactable, the opponent isn't going to see it coming. Crazy fast, and if it does hit them, they um, are jailed, um, that's a term that they can't do anything except block after they hit it. So they don't have time to sidestep or um, yeah, do a, a dodge or a sidestep or run or anything, so if they get hit by this projectile, they are forced to block your attack afterwards, which means you can go in for her pressure, and some of her pressure is pretty crazy, as we'll mention later. So yeah, really good move. Um, it's not a zoning tool, but it's really actually allows her to come in, because if they do get hit by it, then she is allowed to come in for free, and do combos or whatever, any kind of crazy pressure, because your opponent has to block after you do it, or else they're going to get hit. And if they get hit, that's even better, because you're getting a combo. Um, another thing to mention about it is, as you can see here, this combo usually leaves the opponent in the air so they can recover. But not after you do a Tilt Quirk 1. The tilt Quirk 1 actually restands the opponent so they can't do a recovery, and they're even slightly in the air, which means you can do. Whoopsie whoops. You can kind of do this reset. Which, all in all, if the opponent doesn't um, know how to do a just guard or. Well, yeah, that's the only way they can get out of it, because you actually can't block this, because you you're in the air, and you can't block when you're in the air unless you do a just guard. So all of this together, it does about 8,000 damage if you add up all of the non-connecting combos, and uh, just because your opponent didn't know how to just guard. So that's pretty strong stuff. There is actually a way of getting out of it, and that is if your opponent, um, where is it? If they do a counter-attack at the perfect time, you can actually get out of it, but the timing for doing that counter-attack is really tight. So yeah, it's not a real reset, but it's something you can keep in mind when you're playing with Momo, because if you don't have any meter and you just want to do free stuff, she can get a lot of damage this way, <laughs> just by doing... But I don't really like doing it that much, because it's kind of spammy looking and not that cool. But it is also what she can use to extend her combos when she's in... in this form. Okay, let's get into her quirk 2. It is this just this ram move. It's, again, it doesn't do that much damage. It knocks the opponent away, and that's basically its, its use. You can use it in her combos to add damage. Wait, let's not face the wall. Um, so all of those moves together, she added, she put, she did three quirk moves at the end there. Um, and, you know, it adds some good damage to the end of her combos. So after you do your yellow attack, you're almost always going to go into the charge. And then you can cancel the charge into another button, usually. And then, yeah, getting good damage to the end of your combos. Um, this move is also really good at getting wall splats. So if you've realized, like, your face is in the wall, like, you know how sometimes when you're right up against the wall and usually wall splat moves don't work from that close because they'll about just bounce off the wall? Not with Momo. If you realize you're facing against the wall, do her charge, and your opponent's gonna be in the wall. 
It's a really good move for if you realize, like, oh, wait, my opponent's facing the wall. Let me just, you know, get a super easy wall splat. And then you're getting big damage. That was a single dash cancel combo. Pretty high damage from a super, super small starter just from her, like, realizing, oh, I'm facing the wall. Boop, charge. And then, yeah, super easy wall splat conversions. Okay, um, this move is also pretty um, complicated because if you hold down the button, she summons a shield. Now when she has a shield out, uh, it acts practically the exact same, except does a little bit more damage, 1200. So she's going to get a little bit more damage from her combos, which is good. It has the same properties when it hits, though, other than damage, and... But that's not... The... That's not the main reason you put the shield up. The shield up is actually a really good move for a lot of different reasons. So, if you have the shield up, its main thing that you're going to be uh, using it for most of the time is if your opponent um, attacks you, you don't lose guard meter. See that stamina bar at the top that would usually be depleting if I block a combo? It isn't going down at all based on Bakugo's attacks. Obviously it's going down because I'm blocking, but Bakugo's attacks actually are not depleting any meter, which is really a crazy helpful tool in so many matchups. Like, if you've ever fought against a, um, like a crazy shoot style Deku, or um, even a 100% Deku, like characters that can have crazy pressure, or Gran Torino, that like have a lot of pressure and it's hard to deal with sometimes, and for characters that have really good block strings, like Nomu, has an infinite block string. This is amazing because their moves don't actually <laughs> break down your guard at all, so you can just guard like forever. Obviously until like your guard runs out just from it going down slowly from guarding. But a lot of people like if they realize that you're not your thing is not going down, they mess up their offense, they don't they like have a moment of hesitation, like wait what's happening? Because they realize that their guard pressure isn't working. And yeah, it gives you a lot of... Oopsie. Excuse me, can I have my shield? Yeah, and if you ever notice the gap, you can just block to the ends of the earth. Like, wait the whole time until you realize the gap in or whatever they're doing. You can do a just guard or do a sidestep in whatever combos they're doing. Really, really strong stuff with the shield. Now, that's not the shield's only purpose. It has a lot of things. So not only does it make you take zero guard pressure, um, if you block something, so you have practically infinite guard. It also um, goes through projectiles. So if I make Bakugo do his... Bakugo isn't a great demonstration because his projectile is kind of weird. But, <laughs> but if you're against a, a Toga or a Darby or someone who has projectiles and things on the screen a lot, as you saw there, she goes straight through them. Um, kind of like um, All Might's tilt work one. Um, it'll just go straight through whatever. You do have to have the startup frames aren't invincible. But as you saw there, she went straight through it. It's not as good as All Might though because she doesn't travel as far, obviously. But a still really good thing to note, if like you're against a Toga or someone and you want to make ground on them, you can like, instead of like running around, if you see them do a projectile, just dash through it and you'll be invincible to the projectile and yeah. Interesting uh, anti-zoning tool. And not only that, I'm not done. This move is really crazy. So when she has a shield on, it doesn't really um matter that much for Bakugo, but with unblockable attacks, they actually do zero damage now. So as you saw there, Bakugo did his unblockable attack, and it does zero damage. Which is crazy strong, especially against characters uh, like Momo, or like 100% Deku, or other characters that just have a, a, um, a damaging red move that just uh, knocks the opponent down. Spe yeah, especially against Momo, uh, Momo or 100% Deku, having this shield on is crazy, because if they do their red attack, because they don't get a combo from it, I just get knocked onto the ground and it doesn't do any damage. So I do get hit by it, but it doesn't do anything to me. So with 100% Dekus, it just sends me flying away, and they're not going to get anything from it. So I, like, which makes the whole thing of her having infinite blocks, like, even more scary. Because they're like, oh, if my, my, um, 
pressure on guard isn't going to do anything to her. She can just block everything I do. I'll just do a red attack. Well, that doesn't even work against Momo because it, it won't do any damage. So, pretty, pretty crazy stuff with the shield. <laughs> okay. Let's... So, now for... I think it calls it her tilt quirk to charged or whatever. But just essentially, after she holds the Quirk 2 button, after doing any move, or even when she's in, like, stun... So, like, see, she can charge... It's basically ch her charged Quirk 2, and if you press the button after charging, she releases the cannon. So even after I hold that, after I hold the shield, I was holding down the button, then she has the charged Quirk 2. But after any time, even if you've done, like, a flash bombs, you can charge it up. Just any time where you can hold down a button, you can charge up her quirk too. Now this cannon doesn't do crazy damage, but depending on where you are, you can actually combo off of it, which is really helpful. Okay, um, I might actually get us a bit closer to the combo so I can up uh, to the wall so I can show it a bit easier. But, oh, fuck no, stop blocking. But essentially, if you throw it out and the opponent gets hit by it. Uh, depending on what weapon you have out, it's easier with uh, her spear, I find. And yeah, just depending on when you hit them. <laughs> Very good demonstration, Mr. Elbrona. Yeah, come on. So they get hit by it, and then when it's nearly over, you can combo off of it. Not only that, but um, it's not as great in this game, I'm sure you remember it, is if you blocked this move in One's Justice 1, your guard would break. That's definitely not the case in this game, you can see it does barely any guard pressure. But what's really good about this is, not only does it make her completely safe, like if she does like... And then the opponent, <laughs> if it didn't break their guard, they get pushed to like the other side of the screen by the laser cannon. So it's extremely safe. But it also can be used to extend her her combos like to the heavens because I mean her block pressure because depending on when your opponent decides to attack you you can get it almost guaranteed oh oops I don't have it charged up you can get it almost guaranteed after her yellow attack there's not much space to um, move there. And then after that, you can run up. It's a bit harder. Wait, get this sword away. Because <laughs> her pole's her fastest weapon, it works best with this. So after they have. Wait, I'll just break his guard. Um, yeah, so if they have blocked this, you can run up and continue gu your guard pressure and then go in for a combo. Because they got it's almost an infinite guard um, block loop. Which is. Kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it, but obviously there are gaps, and you can't get it out for free in block, so you have to make sure the opponent's respecting you after your yellow attack and stuff like that. So it's not completely guaranteed. Okay, let's get into her tilt quirk two. Her tilt quirk two is where she throws uh, three flash bombs, and at first glance you might be like, "What is the point of these? They don't seem that useful. They don't do zero damage, and they meaty blow quite often. Like, why would you ever be wanting to do this?" Like, but let me tell you. These are like a better and worse version of Jiro's annoying projectile that everyone hates. This one here, where well, you get a combo up of, Momo's works in the same way. You can't actually see that it gets a combo up of it because they don't count his hits themselves. Actually, I can show you if I get guard from second stage. So if there's ever a place after my first hit that the opponent can guard, he will be. So if I do this, if this wasn't a combo, he would have guarded there. So if they get hit by these flash bombs, she gets a true combo off of any hit, which is pretty pretty amazing, because they have a huge hitbox, all three of those explosions together. If the opponent gets hit by one of them, Momo is guaranteed to get a combo from anywhere on the screen, especially since her um, regular attacks reach so far. If I, um, it's basically the max range of these explosions. See, they don't even hit there. So if I'm like over here, and they get hit by one of those, I get to go in for a full combo, completely guaranteed, just because they like got bit hit by one of these huge explosions. And um, the same works for the air tilt part too. It's practically the same move. 
except if she throws them in a more linear line and they explode closer together and they travel a bit further as well. So that can be useful if the opponent's trying to run away or something, you can try and track them down. This is just a really awesome move to just get in on your opponent to as a way of counter zoning. It doesn't, it's, <laughs> she can't zone you out with these because they don't do any damage. It's, she's not going to be running away throwing these all game. But if she throws them, then you do get hit by them, then she does get a full combo. So if you do get hit, then she's coming in and doing a full combo and, you know, you've lost a big chunk of health. Obviously they do scale the, um, her combos quite a bit, so she doesn't do as much damage as she normally would be. But it's still good to be able to get uh, completely free and completely guaranteed damage off of these huge, huge explosions. So yeah, basically any time after you end your combos, like if you end your combos in the shield bash or something, just throw these out, and depending on where the opponent uh, recovers to, if they recover backwards or to the left or to the right, um, and if you throw these out, the opponent is like going to have to block them, so you're forging their respect on wake up, which means after you do a move like this, and if they wake up um, into them, either they have to block it, and then they block that, so they have to block your attacks afterwards, or if they get hit by it, well we already know what happens then, you're getting a combo. So basically whenever you have time in order to throw out these projectiles, and they're not something that you can throw out willy-nilly, because as you can see, I'm holding uh, the walk button with Momo, and they have long active frames, I mean they, it has the long startup frames and long um, recovery frames, so she is very punishable, so you can't just be throwing these out because the opponent will interrupt you or um, punish you for doing these if they don't get hit by it, but a lot of the time other projectiles will interrupt you, so you can't just throw them out all the time because they're not that useful as projectiles, but if you ever know that you have like time, like if you've knocked the opponent down, or if they are like trying to charge something up, throw out these. If they block them, you're plus on block. And if they get hit by them, obviously you're going to get a combo. Anyways, let's get into her quirk 1, which is where she changes weapon. Now this is where Momo gets really interesting. So when she has a new weapon, she has two new quirk moves. She has a qu her quirk 1 is a new move, and in sword form you can see it's this slash, this 2500 damage. She also has her, um, her regular attack string changes as well, if the startup of it is different. And also her tilt quirk 1, her weapon throw can be affected. The sword is actually practically the same as the pole. Except it isn't. So, let's get into what is great about the sword. So, its regular attack string looks like this. She gets this quirk 1 move, and she also gets her weapon throw. Now, what's amazing about all of these is you can actually combine them all together. Because unlike in the regular form, her weapon throw isn't just a stun, it's a combo extender. So, unlike with the regular pole, where it was a reset combo, this is a genuine combo. So if I do three hits to quirk 1 and to tilt quirk 1, and then I can just attack again, that's a true combo. That was 8,000 damage there, completely free. Which is pretty amazing, and it was all grounded. And pretty easy. 8,800, no dash cancels. And obviously I could add a dash cancel if I wanted to, I could do... Um... Whoopsie whoops. I could make it simpler, I'll just do something like... Oh, 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 it messed up, what? There you go, you're getting 9,700 damage, which is pretty good damage, but I don't even do that that often if I have the sword on. If I have the sword active, and I know that I'm getting a hit... Oh, get out of the corner, Bakugo, damn it. If I know that I've gotten a hit with the sword active, I'll just go for a completely free combo, because... Like, 8,800 damage, com easy combo, pretty good stuff. And also, because it's all grounded, it's a really good way for her to combo into her plus ultra 1. I don't know if this will work because of the corner. Damn it, yeah, the corner. Momo really hates the corner with her um, plus ultra 1. It messes it up a lot. How do I get Bakugo? Here, I'll just get him a bit over in this direction. Bakugo. Yep. 
Okay, wait, oh my god, I'm sorry. Return to center a little bit, and then stop. Okay, so if you have, if you get a hit and you're not, like, close to a wall, you can actually get really good damage with that plus ultra one. Did that just reset? Are you kidding me? Okay. So... Why is this suddenly not working? <laughs> Sorry, wait, look. She can get high damage combos into plus ultra 1. So this was zero dash cancels, just a single plus ultra 1, and she's getting like 16,600 damage. Which is really huge damage for a plus ultra 1 combo that didn't cost you any meter. So, really good stuff with the sword. I really like having the sword active, because you know that you can have an easy hit confirm. Any any small hit you get, whether it's a punish or a, just a regular attack, you know that you're going to be able to get like easy damage off of it there. You, yeah, look, 9,000 damage, zero dash cancels. Like, super good damage for no meter spent. Okay, now for uh, Spear. Her spear, her regular attack string, turns into it has a multi hit at the um, at the front, which means if the opponent is doing a counter attack, it'll slow them down. So you can um, avoid counter attacks a lot easier, because as you know, multi hit attacks slow down counter attacks a lot. So a lot of the time, if you see someone do a counter attack, her um, when she's in Spear, you, you can realize that it's happitting because they get slowed down from the multi-hitting But yeah, okay. <laughs> when she has the Spear active, her her two new moves, her Quirk 1 is this um, Slash Down, and her Quirk Throw, her Tilt Quirk 1 Throw, is that, which is pretty amazing, and I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> so, um, her Quirk 1 is really good when she's like this, it does a lot of damage, she can get it off of her... Um, air combo pretty easily, so like an air portion of her combo can look something like this. Oops. Oh no. And she can get super easy high damage off of that, but, and it also is a really good move because it leaves the opponent hit for such a long time, they're just fumbling there for a while, and they can't recover out of it, so, um, Spear Form is actually really good for, um, getting easy hit confirms into supports, like Jiro, because this, this move here just lets them, has them, like, bouncing around in the same spot, so Jiro is a really easy support, but any other combo supports would work well. Um, even if I call out Jiro like really late, you can get a combo from it super easily. See like that? That was super late and I still managed to get a combo. And you can get really high damage from that. And obviously you can even keep it meterless if you want. Whoopsie. Ten thousand damage, zero dash cancels, just because you like saw that your button hits. Anyways, what's really what I think the best thing about the spear, um, the spear weapon is this, her tilt quirk one, <laughs> and as you can see, for that exact reason, it is the king of all splat projectiles. It's so not only is it a projectile, so if I hit my opponent from like here, and they just happen to get hit by the projectile, if they're facing a wall, they are getting wall splat for a combo for sure. I just love it so much that this just, they get hit by the spear, and they just fly all the way into the wall. Which means you can, you know, get a new weapon up, dash in, and get huge damage. That was zero dash cancels, i just like to point out, just for them getting hit by a projectile. Actually, I could get even more if I... So they get hit by my... oh. Yeah, it doesn't reach full screen, by the way, just like her other weapon throws. So, if they get hit by this projectile... They're getting into an easy 12,000 damage combo, which is pretty crazy. And not only is it a really good wall splat tool, like a really, really good wall splat tool. It's also a really good combo ender because it does a huge chunk of damage. It's what, like 4,000, 6,000 4, damage? 
which is a lot of damage for a single move. It's kind of like Muscular's charged up punch in that way. And um, showing that it's a really good wall spot move, like even if your like, face is like right in the wall, if you throw this move, they're just gonna get like, like just, they're, they're in the wall for sure. If you're facing the wall, no matter what the situation, your opponent's gonna be in the wall. <laughs> And then you're getting super easy damage. I could have done uh, some better extension if I had done something like this. So off of this like super easy, like this isn't even a regular combo. But, like, oh, I realize I'm facing the wall. Just get a new weapon out. And then you're getting like 11,300 damage for free. And that wasn't even a dash cancel. Like I could have extended that more. But it's, it's pretty crazy stuff. And from whatever situation, and unlike her, um, her quirk 2 launcher, which, like, only wall splice if your face is, like, right in the wall, if I'm even, like, over here, and I do, like, two hits into this, oh, that nearly worked. <laughs> or if I did three hits from over here, so if you are facing the wall in any degree, you're gonna get a wall splat. I'm not quite sure what just happened. Right? Yeah. And you're getting super easy damage off of a wall splat. So yeah, spear mode is really, really strong. Okay, um, oh, something I want to mention about when she is in her charged weapons, whether it's her spear or her sword, she has this, um, like, <laughs> infinite block string, which is pretty ridiculous. So, it involves just doing her quirk 1 into her quirk 2. And you can just do that as much as you like, until their guard is broken. And then obviously you can go into combos from that, and then <laughs> if their guard breaks. And the same works if she's in spear mode. And you might be wondering, Mr. Elbronen, it looks like there's a huge gap in between, like, this move and that. But that slowdown effect, it's not just happening to Momo, it happens to the opponent too. So if I do this... <laughs> and then get the opponent to dodge. Uh, oops. A lot of the time... Wait, let me break his guard. And then when they are able to dodge, there's usually, like, no frames there to, that allow them to dodge. So, I haven't really seen anyone be able to avoid this infinite block string online. Which I kind of don't like the idea of an infinite block string, because that smells of, like, One's Justice, One Todoroki's infinite block string. So, they're probably going to patch it, but I thought it's something that I may as well mention. That she can just always do... Practically can instantly break your guard from any touch. And then go in for her cool combos. Oh, I missed it. But that would have done like 10,000 damage combos. Anyways, now that we're done with all of her button stuff that I want to talk about, let's get into her combos. So, where do I even start with Momo with combos? She has so many different routes. So, I already mentioned that she has this, like, loop reset thing, that if the opponent doesn't know how to just guard or time their counter attack correctly, you're getting a guaranteed, like, 8,000 damage just from doing this. But I don't really like to do this that often because it's kind of spammy looking and it's not that cool, you know? So if you're in um, regular pole form, a combo that I like to usually do is like this. And ignore that the wall splat happened. If it didn't happen, then it's a guaranteed combo and does 4, 000, uh, 8,400 damage, which is a bit below average damage. But remember, in her pole form, she's really fast attacks and she will do more damage with her other weapons. And as you did the saw just then, um, it actually is really likely to um, be a wall splat. Oh, uh, depending on where the opponent's facing. But, okay. Yeah, so, in regular pole form, her combos aren't that interesting. She's not going to be doing that much damage from this form. But, um, where some actually advanced combos come in, even with the pole thing, is, and I haven't seen anyone use something like this, um, she can actually combo into her delayed Madryoshka, um, Quirk 2 move, which, um, does combo, and she can combo out of it. And my opponent is on recovery, so this is a true combo. 
so this combo here is actually true. And that means, and it works off of the um, yellow attack as well, so that means that off of a regular attack, if you see that you hit, you can do something like this. And that is 6,000 damage, no dash cancels, which is pretty, pretty decent damage. But that also means if I add in a dash cancel to this combo... Um, ooh, maybe if I <laughs> change it a bit to make... There we go, she's getting 9,000 damage from a 1 dash cancel combo if you want to do those extensions with the flash bombs. And, um, yeah, I think that's a pretty interesting... So, in order to get this combo, you can't just cancel straight into the bombs or else they'll miss. You have to wait a little bit and then cancel into them, and then do a single attack into um, an instant yellow attack. Into the Madryoshkas again. Which can sometimes be a bit hard to get. But if you do get it, the reward's really high. If it do does Meteor Blow, you've gotten pretty decent damage. But I think it's just a really good way, like if you don't want to be spending Meteor in your combos. You can get really good damage this way without using... Um, uh, dash cancels. And it just does it does make her combos look a lot flashier. I, I do agree. And if it doesn't uh, meet you blow early, then you're gonna get 9,300 damage, which is really good damage for a single dash cancel in her pole form. Now, let's stop talking about pole form, because it's boring. So, if you have your sword out, you can actually get <laughs> um, really interesting combos. So, in the sword form, she can go three hits, to quirk one, and then tilt quirk one, weapon throw, and then, th see that follow up there? That was actually a whole combo. So <laughs> after her wet weapon throw, she can just do another attack string and it combos, which is pretty crazy. And then see that all there? That was zero dash cancels, 9,200 9, damage. Pretty high damage meterless, if you ask me. That's what I really like about the sword form. You can always get such huge damage completely meterless. Uh, if it does miss, you're still 8,300 is still a lot of damage. And obviously you can put in dash cancels to make it a bit more damaging. But, I mean, I wouldn't really re recommend it, because you're getting so much damage anyways. Oops, that didn't work. You're getting so much damage meterless, I don't see what the point is of adding a dash cancel, unless you know it's going to like finish the round. 9,500. <laughs> like, it's not that much more. I recommend just going for like completely meterless combos. Especially since, like, you are on the ground, and if you do want to spend meter, you can go in for her plus ultra one. Um, I didn't... And if you do the full string into it, it does about 17,000 damage. I just didn't want to do it because I'm facing the ball, and it would have failed. Wait, if I make Bakugo return to the center a little bit... Um, she gets really good grounded combos into her plus ultra one. This is going to do a lot of damage. And remember that that um, entrance combo was completely meterless, so this is just a single plus ultra um, meter, and that did like 16,600 damage, which is really big damage for a single plus ultra combo. Okay, um, that's basically it for her sword combos. Um, her sword, I don't know if you actually... The combos work as well if you're in the air, I believe, because her attack string leaves the opponent on the ground. You can do, like, if you get a punish if you're in the air, like, say I, like, go to punish the opponent and I do something like this, uh, the same works, so I can do the same combos. Uh, they can just be a bit tighter, though, because it's a bit weird because she has to land and stuff. But you can still do them, like, if I make it simple like this. and still get really good damage. Okay, um, for spear combos... Um, spear is more of a weapon that I like to use as a, um, kind of just like, in the situation. So it's really good for adapting, like, oh, I'm facing a wall. 
Wolf Flat. It's more of a less of a um combo reliable. I mean, it does do really good damage um, combo-wise, so if I, you can end your combos and stuff like this. Which is a lot of damage in its own, 6,700 damage, like, guaranteed at the end of your combo. So something basic in spear form that you can do would be, like, um, maybe... Yeah, it would probably just be two hits. Dash cancel, two hits. And then that's 8,900 damage. Uh, that does sound a bit low. You, I think you can do something like this. Oops, oops, no, I threw it away. Nine thousand six hundred damage. But the main strength of the um, spear form is, I feel that like. You can get that decent damage, 9600 is by no means bad damage, but she can get really good damage if I've done like a combo. Like if I'm over here and I realize I'm facing a wall, you can cancel anything into her spear, and then you're getting big damage. Um, I don't know why I decided to do that there. And then you're getting huge damage, um, that was zero dash cancels, and it was like 11,500 damage just because I like saw that I was facing a wall. So I feel like that's the real strength of the spear form, is just the versatility of if she ever realizes she's facing a wall, you get a wall splat, you can summon a new weapon, charge up. and then get huge damage. There's not even really a point in doing a dash cancel there, it doesn't add that much damage, but getting 11,500 or whatever we had before, really good damage for <laughs> zero dash cancels, obviously. Okay, um, in spear form, uh, she can do the Madriosh combos practically the same, except start it with, um, I mean, in any of her forms she can do these combos. I just find them to be sometimes a bit easier in this with the spear because she has more time to hit confirm that the first two hits have hit, thanks to the multi-hit at the start. And then you can go into the whole thing again. Wow, that didn't even meet your block. But yeah. Okay, now, I don't usually talk about sidekicks in my breakdown videos, but I feel like they're really important to, know, uh, to Momo's combos. So, especially in spear form, because she has this quirk 1 that leaves the opponent just like jiggling around in the same space, it's really good for combos with supports. Any kind of combo support works, and the, the, you just have so much time. I can call like Jiro early, and it'll work. I can call her extremely late, like now and it's still gonna hit the opponent, so it just gives me like a lot of ease in getting super easy hit confirms into combos. And then obviously I can do something like this. Oh man, that meaty blow, damn it. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this. And because with um, zero support you can have time to rearrange yourself, I walked so I was facing a wall, summoned my, like, um, d got a wall splat from the weapon throw, summoned a new weapon, and then did an extension off of the wall splat. And yeah, I just think the spear form, even though it has slightly worse combos, it is, like, really versatile in what you can do. And it is a lot easier for hit confirming into support extensions like this, as like I just showed. Get a new weapon up. Dash in, and you're getting huge damage. By the way, that 12,600 damage combo, completely meterless. It just cost my Jiro, but that's pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> okay, um, you can actually use Jiro to um, extend your combos as well, um, just in any state. If I do like two hits, and then when the second hit hits, I call out, and that adds a lot of damage to your combos. 11,200 damage in my regular pull form, that's tons compared to what I'm usually getting. And I think it's definitely worth it, and it, it's just costing me a support. 
it comes back decently fast, and it adds a lot more damage to my combos. Especially if I do something like, uh... Like, with this, um... Flash Bomb, like, reset. That there was 10,300 damage, and it didn't cost me any dash cancels. Pretty amazing for her pole forms, seeing as, like, you usually don't get that much damage. And her pole form is so great in many, like, so many ways, because she does... Her attacks are crazy fast, and they reach crazy distances. So if I've ever, like, hit my opponent with a Flash Bomb... The fact that I can get, uh, like, 10,000 damage for free... Off of any hit is kind of, like ridiculous, or I can decide to do a bit more damage, like if I want to put in a dash cancel. Obviously that was a bit less damage because the flash bombs um, scale your combos a bit. But yeah, Jiro is a really good support for extending her um, combos. And it's kind of canon. I like to use canon teams, and Jiro works with Momo because they're, you know, friends in the class. And yeah, obviously she also gives her um, Momo really good just meterless damage if you don't want to do a dash cancel. Because you can just jump into the air and then do her air extension. That was 11,000 damage. I did do a dash cancel though. <laughs> Here, let me show without a dash cancel. Nine thousand damage. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff for no dash cancels. Nine thousand in, in um. Uh, what am I doing? In pole form is really good. Um, obviously using Jiro as a support in that way is really good for um sword because if I've done this combo here. And then, that actually messed up a bit. Let me do that again. There we go, 10,800 damage for a completely free combo, I just remind you. That's like 11,000 damage, and I didn't do a dash cancel. And <laughs> doesn't it look so cool as well? So like, I have my sword out, I like from a regular punish, I do this, and then I get to go into another attack. Oh, that could have been a wall splat as well. Um, how can I guarantee that that's a wall splat? I don't think I can just because of how they're positioned. But yeah, using Jiro is really um, good for any of her, any of her weapons, so in regular state, just off of her regular attack string she can get it. With Jiro, um, with her sword form it's really good because after she extends the combo she can get it off of the weapon throw and then follow up attack string. And it's really good in spear form because after you do two hits into this, you can summon Jiro. And then you're almost guaranteed to get a wall splat, as long as you're not like facing right into the wall. See that combo, even just there, 10,268 damage, like zero dash cancels. It's pretty good stuff. Um, if I do something like, wait, which does more damage? That? 4,000. 4,300. So if I do something like this, Oh, that didn't work. Oh, I messed it up. Um, something like this. Oh, it missed. What? <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow, and that's even a wall splat. <laughs> Oh, 10,400 damage plus I would have gotten a bunch more off of the wall splat. So, really, really crazy damage combos, guys. I, Momo is just <laughs> so much fun. Um, um, when she has the spear out, she can even get really easy extensions off of her air combos. So after I do something like this and I call out Jiro... <laughs> like, 11,000 damage, zero dash cancel combo because I hit them in the air. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy stuff. And all of this is even better knowing that, like, she has these flash grenades, so she's getting these really, like, um... Like, if the opponent gets hit by these, she's getting these all these guaranteed combos. Actually, yeah, I just realized, if I do something like this... 
I can bring out this. Oh my god. Did you see that? 11,000. Wait, I could make it even more. Um. Wait, what? Or. Um. Yeah, anyways, wait, that's gonna be a lot of damage. So if I do. Like, if I catch my opponent with the pole, which is usually, like, the bad weapon, let's see how much damage I can get. Ten thousand five hundred damage from the pole, just because I and that was zero dash cancels. Here, wait. Twelve thousand seven hundred damage, guys. Single dash cancel from pole, from pole, which is her low damage weapon, or what I thought was her low damaging weapon. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. So, and the same would work with this. If I did... Okay, no, that meaty blows. But yeah, still guys, wait, if I... I feel, I feel like I have to test this now. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stop going crazy combos, but you saw that before. Twelve thousand seven hundred damage for a super like easy combo using Jiro from her pole, which is a super fast attack. Is pretty amazing stuff. And obviously with all of these like crazy ground combos, so if I do something like this. Oh, oh what? Um, no, no. So if I do something like this, I can come into my plus ultra too. And that is huge damage starting into my plus ultra too. And I don't think it's gonna scale it that much, so this should do a lot of damage. Oh my god, 20,700 damage, and obviously you could cancel that into the plus ultra one as well, and that would do a lot of damage. It's just, oh, this is why I love Momo so much, she's so much, like, flexibility and, like, able to, like, get good stuff going off of any situation. She's really good, um, uh, block pressure, uh, uh, I don't even know what to say, she's just... <laughs> She's just so fun. She has. She's not an annoying zoning character. Like the only projectiles she has, she uses to get in on the opponent. She has cool combos that aren't really that overpowered. Like they're not um regular Deku or Gran Torino or 100% Deku level damage combos. She has to be in uh, very specific situations in order to get high damaging combos. Um, she has different combo extensions depending on where you are. She has resets, like using her tilt quirk one, because it re stands the opponent. She is really dependable at getting wall splats, which I really like. So if you ever realize you're facing a wall, you can be guaranteed to be getting big amounts of damage. I don't know why she missed that. But just the point is, she's so flexible, and in certain matchups, if you realize the spear's working better for you, or the sword's working better, you can just change. You can completely change your playstyle. If you're against someone that can pressure you a lot, bring out. Oh, oh there's a cannon as well. <laughs> you can bring out your shields to be able to block infinitely. There's just so much she can do. Like, if you have the, the spear out, you have huge damage. Like, anything. Oh, I didn't even mean to do that. That was even wasn't even a proper combo. There we go. Thirteen thousand damage just because she got a wall splat off of her um an easy like combo from the air. She's just so much fun, guys. She has hit confirmed with her red attack. A plus ultra one does a lot of damage. I don't think I even mentioned it that much, because like if I just do a regular attack string into my plus ultra one, I'm getting what like ten thousand, twelve thousand damage, just for that super easy hit confirm. She's just 
So much fun, guys. I think Momo is one of the best designed characters in this game. She's not crazy overpowered. I would say she is very strong, but I don't think she has any many or too many exploits. I think this re air reset thing can be kind of annoying and should be fixed. But other than that, she is just she is so much fun, and I love playing with her. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> Ooh, lags. Love that. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed all of my breakdown videos that I've been making. Um, if you didn't know, yeah, I have one on every character. So, if you're ever interested in learning on someone, I have a basic breakdown for everyone. But, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in whatever the next one.